Hey everyone, Avalon here. I thought today I might talk a little bit about my master's research, because I have suddenly realized that I never actually said anything about it online in an official capacity, and it's just been published, so I might as well do a little bit of self-promotion, right? So I did this research in Taiwan, at National Taiwan University, but the results are really applicable to everybody because we all live on the same planet, right? We all look up at night and see the same stars. Well, actually, a lot of us don't see very many stars anymore. Why is that? Well, for a long time now, people have been building buildings, putting lights in them, and leaving those lights on all night. When we talk about light pollution, most people think of what's called astronomical light pollution, which is when lights from street lamps, house lights, cars, etc., goes up into the clouds and bounces around, making the night sky look really bright. This is, of course, a huge bummer for astrophysicists and amateur astronomers, but there's also another problem. It's called ecological light pollution. And this is the impact of these local sources of light, street lamps, house lights, cars, etc., billboards even, on species on the ground. You've probably heard of some examples of this. For example, baby sea turtles often get lost on their way to the ocean, distracted by local sources of light. And birds can get trapped in columns of light. Well, I study fireflies, which are these very cute beetles that talk to each other using little flashes of light. So what I want to know is, what happens when you put a big street lamp in the middle of a firefly habitat? We know a little bit about this. We know that fireflies flash to communicate. So if you're outside and you see some fireflies flashing, if you look closely, you'll see that different fireflies do different flash patterns. And in fact, every firefly species has its own flash pattern. But the fireflies that you're seeing doing these patterns are usually males where the females are hidden on the ground. So the males will do their special flash pattern, and the female, looking up, if she sees a guy that she likes, she'll flash back, and the two will talk to each other. So you can actually measure these parts of the flash dialogue. You can measure the duration of each flash, the time between flashes, and how long it takes a female to respond to decode the firefly language and learn a little bit more about the fireflies that you're seeing. So what about artificial light? Well, we know that it's probably not that good. So here's a study from Brazil uh, on a university campus where the authors surveyed three transects at a certain distance from this big outdoor sport court illuminated by four super bright floodlights. And the authors found that on nights when the floodlights were on, they saw many fewer fireflies than on nights when the floodlights were off. So the fireflies seemed to be avoiding the light, maybe. Here's another study from Virginia looking at two species, one that comes out earlier in the evening and one that comes out later at night. The authors introduced light into the habitat of these two species, and they found that the one that came out earlier didn't mind the added light all that much, whereas the one that came out later, when it's dark normally, really did seem to care and didn't flash as much when the lights were around. So that hints at an answer to my question. Light is probably not good for fireflies, at least artificial light. But it leaves me wondering. Now, bear with me for a second because I'm going to talk about birds. Uh, for a long time now, we've known that songbirds in urban areas will actually sing more loudly to be heard over the sounds of cars and trucks. So they have a way of shouting to be heard over noise pollution. Now, what I want to know is, can fireflies shout to be seen over light pollution? Or in other words, can fireflies brighten their flash signals to maintain visibility against an illuminated background? And my other question has to do with the source of artificial light. So the first study with the sport court had these bright metal halide floodlights, which you can see put out a lot of green and yellow light. Whereas the second study used white LEDs, which put out a lot more blue light and not as much red or UV. So we can't really compare these two sources of light. We don't know which colors of light are causing the fireflies to respond in this way. So I wanted to investigate this with the following question. What wavelengths affect firefly flash signals? And this is actually a hot topic, at least to me. Because when I moved to Taiwan, I found out that a lot of people here think fireflies can't see red light. 
And so parents will give their children little red flashlights to take around to go firefly watching. Whereas in North America, people say that fireflies can't see blue light, and people have blue flashlights to go firefly watching. This tip is even written on the Boston Museum of Science Firefly Watch website. So which one's right? I don't know. But I came up with a plan to investigate, and the plan goes like this. Uh, first, I would find some fireflies and bring them into the lab. Then I would find a way of recording their flash signals. And once I had a recording going, I would start to expose them to different colors of monochromatic light. And then, you know, something would happen. So step one was pretty simple. Uh, like I said, I did this research in Taiwan, and I worked on a local species, very, very cute, called Aquatica ficta, or Huangyunyin. Now, this species is found all around Taiwan, but it's nocturnal, so its habitat looks a little bit more like this, yeah? And the population I worked with was actually found right in the middle of Taipei City, in this place uh, called Yongjian Elementary, or the grounds of the future Yongjian Elementary, because it was under construction when I was there. In the back, they have this beautiful brook, which was bustling with aquatic effective fireflies. So a couple times during the season, I went and collected about six males from that brook and took them back to the lab. So that's step one complete, easy. Now, how do we record firefly flash signals? This is actually not easy at all. We had this piece of equipment called a spectrometer, which is a very nice thing that you use to measure light. Uh, it's extremely sensitive, it can give you all sorts of information, but it needs to be put right up against the light source. Now, if your light source is alive, that's a little bit more difficult. So I came up with a method that looks like this. I call it the firefly box. And what you're seeing here is a male aquatic ficta firefly with a wire slipped under his wings, pressing him back against that nice, comfortable piece of foam. This doesn't hurt the firefly, they're in no danger whatsoever, but they didn't seem to like it very much, so they would give off what are called alarm flashes, these bright pulses of light that basically say, stay away, stop doing that, let me go. And they would do that for a long time, 30 minutes to an hour, which was great because it meant I could get a very long recording of their flash signals. So while it's not the most natural environment in which to record flash signals, it was extremely convenient. Now, we've got the flash signals recording. Time to expose these guys to some monochromatic light. So we ordered eight special custom-made LED pucks with these colors going all the way from violet to deep, deep red. And we set them up in this second firefly contraption. Uh, the details here are not all that important, but you should know that the light at the top shines down. We can adjust the brightness using this neutral density filter. And the light goes into this box and illuminates the entire box. So by changing the light, we can change the ambient illumination and record what the firefly does while we're changing it. So here is what I found. This is a recording from one male. The x-axis is time, so this is kind of like an EKG. It's over time, you see the line bouncing up and down, up and down, and the bounce is the flash, and the height of each line is the intensity of the flash. So for the first 60 seconds, you see the fireflies flashing away, flash, flash, flash. It's pretty fast. He's pretty annoyed. <laughs> and then I added a little bit of dim green light, and all of a sudden, you see him flash a lot more brightly. Flash, flash, flash. We turn the light out, and he slowly goes back to normal. Then I turned on a big, bright green light, and again, flash, 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 flash. But you can notice he's not flashing as much, in the middle there especially. So this happened sometimes, and sometimes this happened. Here's another male, and you can see he's flashing away. We turn on the light, he totally stops. Take off the light, he starts flashing again. Turn on another light, he really just is not into it at all. So these are basically the two reactions I got from these males. When we turned light on, either they flashed more brightly or they stopped, or some combination of the two. So now what I want to know is what's the balance of these two behavioral responses? Uh, so we took recordings from eight different males on eight different evenings, and each recording was 32 minutes, during which we exposed them to all eight colors of light, two brightnesses each in a random order. And then we dropped the first and the seventh recording because they were super weird. So then we're left with six recordings, which we take the data from this, shuffle it around, rearrange it, do some analyses, and we get a nice graph like this. So this is really cool. Uh, on the x-axis, you have wavelength, which is the color of the light illuminating the chamber. 
and on the y-axis you have changes in flash intensity or the brightness of their flash. So you can see two things here. One, when the light is violet, blue, or green, these fireflies flashed a lot more brightly, really significantly. But when the light was yellow, orange, or red, they didn't really care, didn't really change their behavior at all. And again, if we look at the changes in the amount of flashing, so we call this flash frequency or flashes per minute, we see the same thing. From violet to green, ambient illumination, this causes them to flash a lot less frequently. And then the decline is even more extreme when the light is bright. Can you see that? But also, if it's yellow, orange, or red, they don't care. It doesn't affect them at all. So, to return to my original questions, number one, can fireflies brighten their flash signals? The answer is yes, they can, and it's super cool. I was so amazed and excited to find this out. I really just think it's the coolest thing in the entire world. Two, what wavelengths affect firefly flash signals? So remember, we were kind of curious about this, right? Because in America, people say fireflies can't see blue. In Asia, people say fireflies can't see red. Well, at least for Aquatica ficta, which is an Asian firefly, it really seems like blue light is not so good for them. They really do care about that. It makes them flash more brightly, but not as much. Meanwhile, yellow, orange, or red light don't really have an effect. So these results are obviously super cool, but they're also really useful because, as I'm sure a lot of you know, Taiwan has a bustling firefly ecotourism industry. There are spots all over the island where people can go and appreciate the fireflies glow with their partner, etc. And when you get people going to a firefly habitat to see fireflies, you need to have some lights around or else they're just going to stumble over everything, fall down, and hurt themselves. And that's not good. Now, even though light isn't good for fireflies, we have a workable compromise here. We can pick colors of light that we can see, but fireflies can't see. And in fact, this has already been done. So this is a picture from Daan Forest Park in central Taipei, which was part of the big Taipei Firefly Restoration Project. They now have a small reintroduced population of Aquatica ficta fireflies in the middle of the park where people can go with their family, walk around on a summer's evening, and see firefly flashes, which they might not have seen for a very long time. And in this habitat, they've actually installed these special 590 nanometer amber streetlights. So you can see in the back is the normal horrible blue-white streetlight, and then in the firefly habitat, you have some amber ones. And they even have little signs on them that tell everybody why they are this color, what it does for the fireflies, and why it's such an awesome idea. So with that, I'd like to thank everybody who helped me with this project. This research was sponsored by the Friends of Don Forest Park Foundation, which is a great group of people. And it was supported by my advisor, Yang Ensung Lao Si, as well as many, many other extremely, extremely nice and brilliant people. And then my current research, which I'm not at all talking about today, uh, is supported by Tufts University and the Zoological Lighting Institute, which is a nonprofit dedicated to investigating animal-friendly lighting practices. And with that, I can take any questions, except this is not a live talk, so you're going to have to write them in the description box, and I'll do my best to answer them all, or as many as I can, anyway. So yeah, thanks guys. See you next time.